What's up, people? Welcome back, and how are you? I'm doing okay, thank you. Thank you for asking. Um, as you can see, I am not in my house. I am outside, cold, in my van. And that's what today's video is about. I have owned this van now for just over a year, and I want to talk a little bit about what it's like owning a half-ton van. A few topics that I want to talk about within this video are just the benefits of investments, and when I talk about investments, I don't mean stocks or crypto, I mean investing in yourself, investing in gear, investing in purchases that will make you money or if they don't necessarily make you money in the way of profit necessarily, at least they can make you money so it almost cancels out the money that you owe for the product, which then will turn into profit once it's paid off, which is this investment right here, this van. So to give you a little background, I bought this van in 2021, I believe. Um, it is a 2022 Ford Transit Connect. It is a brand new truck. Um, it took me a while to find one. I actually had to fly to Charlotte, North Carolina to go pick it up. It was in the showroom and it was one of the only ones on the East Coast that was available at the time. And with that, I did have to pay a little bit of a premium. I paid about $31,000 for this van, um, but I saw the benefit and I saw its value and I knew that I was getting a deal and it is the XLT version, which means it is longer than the standard Ford Transit Connect. It has a longer wheelbase, and that was also a big benefit to me because I could fit a lot more stuff in here. And whenever I am with people who want to talk about it, who are asking me questions about the van, or people who are just generally interested in purchasing one because one, maybe they just have a car and they're looking to either buy an SUV or something bigger to hold gear. I always recommend looking into a cargo van because one, you have the benefit now of having a business vehicle. So you could write off parts of this vehicle um, depending on how you structure your business, how you structure your taxes, certain things could be written off as well as charging for the service of bringing this van to productions. But since I purchased this half ton van, I'm able to fill this van with enough gear for it to quantify as a half ton package. So since I have that, I am able to charge $300 per day for this van with the grip gear included. I wanna share with you guys how I load and unload my half ton vehicle. And this example is gonna be for when I'm hired for a full package, meaning all of my lighting included, all grip included, and all camera equipment included as well. So my full package, everything. I'm gonna show you guys how I load in, how I load out, and how everything is organized within my van. Enjoy. All right, so before we go into loading the van with the stands and the cart and all the lights and camera stuff, I wanna talk about what I have on this shelf right here. So I installed this initially to give me a little bit more space and organization for a lot of the gear that I will just keep inside of the van. So starting with this top shelf, I have most of my six by rags here. I have six by full grid, uh, half grid, silk. I have a bunch of neg uh, bounces. Just that's where I keep a lot of my rags. I also have a half and quarter apple box on here. I also keep a little toolkit as well in here. Moving on to the second shelf, I have my full apple box. Below, I have a little pelican where I store all of my light bulbs. And then here is a little crate full of window shears of all different colors. I also have different diffusion material, bounce material as well in here, just kind of miscellaneous. I also have a couple more six by rags and a bunch of gaff tape on the side. Moving to the bottom part of the shelf, I have my bottom crate, which is all of my knuckles, my cartellini clamps, just a lot of my grip gear is in this crate. And then moving over to this side, I have all of my stingers, my multi-port stuff, uh, pretty much anything electrical I kind of have in this little crate. And then some gels on the side right here. So that is pretty much what I have in this shelf area and I keep this like this at all times. I really don't move it very much. Um, and then I start loading everything else. After I make sure the shelf is organized, the next thing I do is organize my C-stands and put these into the front part of the cargo side. All right, so after the C-stands are all packed, the next biggest thing that I own is the Aperture Nova P600C. 
with this huge case. I fit this right into the slot by the seat stands here that you'll see. Right there, just in that little slot. So once the Nova and the C-Stands are packed, next thing I do is stack the gear on the innovative cart. And normally what I do is start with my next biggest light, the Nanlite 4 is a 720 here. This goes on the bottom. It is almost a perfect squeeze. You just gotta tighten it a little bit. There you go. Nanlite 4 is a 500 here. Next biggest case. Slide that bad boy right in. Intellitech Mega Light Cloth. This big boy right here. And I just slide, and I just slide her right in if I can. Just like so. In this slot right here, I have this little window. I pack my little Pavo tubes and they slide right in here. If you go on the top shelf because you don't want to waste too much space, I pack my mix panel on top and it slides right on and it doesn't hit the roof at all. Now these ramps are all set, so it's time to roll on the cart. So now that we have the cart in, we have the Nova, we have the stands, the shelf is all organized. The next thing is to fill in the missing pieces, depending on what the client orders. So if they ordered everything, which they did in this case, we are going to pack some of the camera gear here. We're going to pack combo stand, the rest of these here, and we're all gonna fit it right into there. So the next thing that I like to do is fit these six foot pipes and fit them right on the side. Try to keep these as organized as possible, but they're a bit of a pain. But this is the best solution that I've come with so far, is stacking these here and then throwing some sandbags on top. All right, I'm gonna grab my Ursa, this Pelican. I'm gonna grab my Pocket 6K Pelican. This is kind of like my AC kit. This is where some batteries are, some cables, everything that you pretty much would need to build out a camera goes in here. I'm also gonna grab this case, which is my lens case. And we are going to fit this case as well, which is a lot of batteries. Fit them in right in between this gap right here. Nice and flush, this is a perfect spot for these. This case, I actually normally put up top here. I just completely forgot, but you could still fit it and leave it up top here to create more room and you have some more space still without taking up too much with a small little case. So I'm putting this lantern in here and I'm sliding it on the side here to keep this compressed against the wall. And when I throw some sandbags on, it's also gonna be a little bit tighter. The key is to make sure everything is tight against each other so they don't rock back and forth. So when I'm driving, it doesn't sound like a crazy mess back here. So the key is always just make sure everything is as tight as possible. So now we have some miscellaneous small little lighting gear. So I have the little spotlight from Nanlite here. I'm just gonna throw this on top. And I'm gonna squeeze this right in here. Again, compresses the sides here. It doesn't really damage anything else, but it keeps everything tight and secure on the sides. Squeezing the 300 in, and as you can see where I put it on top of the two Pelicans, the reason why I didn't put this first is because this is a bit of a softer case, and even though it wouldn't really do any damage or squeeze it, I put this on top of the hard case so it doesn't really damage the light. The sandbags go back here. I like to secure these ramps because they get to be a little loud and get loose sometimes. So I secure them. I also try to secure the wheels as much as possible as well. 
All right, so that is how I pack my half-ton van with g and &E gear and camera. Everything from all of my lighting to both cameras to all of the stuff that are in the shelf, everything is packed on here, everything's secure, everything's locked in place. And this is how I finish packing my van. So what made me even initially want to invest in a cargo van? Like why, why even go through the stress of having to do this? So when I moved to Philly, I saw a hole that needed to be filled in this market in particular. And who better to fill that hole than a kid that just moved to Philly and is looking to take over me. And I saw a need and that was having a half ton van as a DP, an owner operator, as well as someone that could provide all of the gear for a production. Most of the rental houses here in Philly have one ton, two ton, three ton, five ton packages. And for me, in the beginning of my early stages here in Philly, I was working on very low budget projects. I wasn't working on things where I could afford a one ton, two ton, three ton, five ton truck. It just wasn't happening at that time. So a lot of the projects that I was working on, I saw that I could add benefit to the production by owning the gear and by providing the production with the gear in house where they don't have to go to a rental house necessarily, I bring the gear in, I take it home, I source it, I organize it, and everything comes all in one with me. And that was something that I found a huge benefit in. And it was something that producers didn't even know that they potentially needed. And I realized that this is going to be extremely beneficial for me and this is going to separate me a lot from other people in this industry because I'm providing an extra layer of benefit to a production. And when you do that as a DP, producers love you and always want to hire you again, bring you back because you are making the production easier. All of these things add up to getting rehired again. And that to me was a huge benefit because coming into a new market, I needed to build these relationships quick and I needed to do so in the right way and be able to provide the maximum amount of value as possible. I invested a lot when I purchased this vehicle in grip gear, making sure that I had enough to quantify as a half ton vehicle. I also needed to make sure that I had a nice lighting package to quantify a project that would range between a five to say $15,000 budget range. I also wanted to make sure that I had a camera package that worked well for a lot of the projects. I started with a one camera package, which was my Blackmagic Ursa, but now I work with a two camera package, which is the Ursa Mini Pro and the Pocket 6K Pro. I'm able to supply both cameras for the corporate commercials, the interviews, the talking head, and I'm also able to supply the lighting package as well, the grip gear. I'm essentially a one-stop shop for these producers. You get to hire a DP and you get all the gear included. And another benefit that I take is hiring all the crew and making sure that I have everyone lined up so that the producers don't have to source them themselves. This is just another added little benefit that I like to provide as well. I knew that if I can get this off the ground and start working and getting this thing out there, I would essentially have a free vehicle. And with my monthly payments being, you know, moderately low, not too bad, all I had to do was essentially rent this thing twice a month at $250 a day, and that would essentially cover my payment for the month. And luckily, I was able to market this thing well, work enough and I was able to secure projects where I rented this thing out twice a month minimum every single month since I've had it. So technically a year and a couple months that I've had this, I have yet to pay for this vehicle out of my own pocket. All the productions have paid for this vehicle so I essentially own a free vehicle. That was a huge benefit and that is one of the main reasons why I actually purchased this vehicle was because I didn't want to pay for a car. Now when I'm done paying this off and hopefully I could pay this off soon, all of that money that I get from renting this vehicle out will be profit. And I'm very excited for that moment because then I won't have a car payment. But I'm fully aware that I'm most likely gonna outgrow this van at a certain time and productions really aren't gonna need this thing for the, the work that I'm doing. And I'm not sure if I really want to continue being an owner operator with this type of package to include. I would love to be a DP that owns a nice camera package to include. But when it comes to G&E gear, I definitely don't see a future for me in particular, owning a lot of gear and being able to provide it. I really wanna be a DP that focuses on the creative, focuses on story, and be able to hire people like gaffers and grips that own their own gear, own their own trucks, and that is a business in and of itself for them to be able to provide that. Because when you hire a grip or a gaffer that owns their own package, they know where everything is, they have the whole truck organized, they have everything you need, and you 
as a DP don't have to worry about it. So that is where I see my future as a DP. But for now, I'm using this opportunity on the productions that I'm on, uh, I would say majority of the time, to rent out my van, to rent out the gear that I have. All of the lighting is a la carte. So each light that they want could be at a certain rate or if they want to be in an all-in-one package. So here's a list of the lighting that I own and the rates that I charge for it. So you could see a little bit of a breakdown of what my lighting package looks like. Also, here is a list of my camera package and the rates so you could see that as well. So as you could see, if you do a little bit of math, when you're working on productions that are looking to hire you as an all-in-one package, like I promote myself sometimes, your rate as a DP essentially doubles per day. And if you have a lot of gear that's paid off, or if you're lucky enough to get some sponsors where gear is handed to you, there's profit to be made very quickly. And I could say that a lot of my income has been from rentals, and without it, I definitely would have made a lot less this year. But you have to have space for the gear, you have to invest in the gear, you have to work to get to the sponsors, all these different things to get to the place where you have all this gear to work for you. And that's the name of the game essentially with investing is how do you make your equipment work for you? And that was my biggest goal in 2021 and going into 2022 and now going into 2023 is how can I make all of my gear work for me even more? What can I invest in to further my investment opportunities in this business? And how can I make a little bit more money while also providing more value to the productions? So that's all I got for you today. I hope you found this to be beneficial and hopefully if you guys are in this industry and looking to invest in some gear, hopefully you can make some wise choices and be able to find gear that will also make you money as well. I definitely recommend looking at a van if you are open to getting a new vehicle and being able to provide this type of service to a production. It has been extremely beneficial for me. I have no complaints and I would do it tenfold again if I had the opportunity. And I would do it again if and I have no complaints. I would do this again and again and I think this was the best choice for me in my scenario. And that's what I will leave you with today. Invest in the right tools and hopefully you'll get a good return back. Thank you guys as always. Hopefully you found this video to be useful, beneficial, valuable. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day and peace out.